Hey everybody, this is Rachel with Will Forage for Food, and today I'm going to try something a little bit different. I'm going to do a video for our seasonal grocery shopping list. So here we go. There's a couple of plants that I want to show you that are growing right here in our landscaping. The first one I want to show you is the goosefoot. Some people call it lamb's quarters. It looks to me more like a goose's footprint than a lamb's quarter. Um, but it always has this white powder on the tops of the leaves here at the very tip of the plant. So that's another good key identifying characteristic. It does really well in disturbed areas. Um, the more disturbed it is, the more common this plant's going to be. And you can use it pretty much anywhere you would use spinach. So you can use it raw in a salad, or you can use it as a cooked green, throw some in lasagna or some other pasta. And also it um, freezes, blanches and freezes pretty well. So you can uh, put it away for later if you don't have anything to do with it right now. Another plant that's right here in the landscaping is purslane. All of this is flat running plant right here that's a little bit succulent. This is purslane. Anyone who's ever had a garden knows this plant. It likes disturbed soils. So the more you weed your garden, the more likely this is to grow. You can see it's just a little bit succulent here. Um, it's got a nice crunch to it. So it's really good in salads. Some people like to pickle it also. Another thing you can find right now is wild strawberries. They're doing really good this year because we've had so much rain. They're really big and you can collect quite a few of them at once. So you may even be able to get enough to make a small jar of strawberry jam this year if you're lucky. Grab this one. Wild strawberries may be a little bit difficult to find but mulberries are everywhere. If you have a neighbor that has a mulberry tree, undoubtedly they will let you put a tarp down and collect. And mulberries tend to be a little bit dirty when they fall down off the tree and they tend to be difficult to collect because they drop catkins and stuff along with the, the berries. However, you don't have to clean all that stuff out of the berries if you use them to make vinegar or wine. And they are loaded with their own natural wild yeast. So if you do make mulberry vinegar or mulberry wine, they will start fermenting for you almost immediately. We have a couple more things that are growing together right here. The first one I want to talk about is this burdock. I have another video that talks about how to identify burdock specifically, but right here we have the leaf petioles and those are edible. The uh, petioles are picked and then peeled to get the, the outer skin is pretty bitter. Um, and then you can use them for cooking. And then right next to it here we have poke. Poke has really bright green leaves when they're young, kind of shiny. And when they're young like this they can be picked and eaten. Poke is one of these plants that you have to cook more than once before you can consume it. So you want to uh, pick it and boil it and then cook it up however you want to cook it. Both the burdock petioles and the poke greens uh, can be used, for example, in stir fries or soups or things like that. My absolute favorite plants, this is wood sorrel. Some people mistake it for clover, but wood sorrel has these, um, if you look at the leaves carefully, they're heart-shaped, whereas clover leaves are oval. Also, the flower is very, very different. You can see the yellow flower here. Um, and wood sorrel has these little pods here, and this is like sweet tarts. It's got this lemony flavor. The whole plant actually has a lemony flavor. What you, if you like fish, try picking a bunch of wood sorrel and stuffing the body cavity of a fish and roasting it over the coals. You're gonna love it. And there you have it, our first video grocery list. <laughs> Yo, 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 yo,